So today I've got my hands on a powerful new mini PC and this one is actually powered by a new 10 core Intel Core i5 processor. So let me introduce you to the B-Link SEI 12. Now considering this has some very decent specifications, it's running full Windows 11 and has many upgradable components, makes this a very attractive mini PC at such a low price of 429. So I just can't wait to put this onto the test to find out how good it really is in our performance tests. Now first of all, inside the box, you will find user manual. This comes with a metal bracket so you can mount the mini PC on the back of your monitor. We have a power cable, a long and short HDMI cable, power supply, so we've got a laptop style power supply included, and I'll give you a close up of the voltage information. And last but certainly not least, the mini PC itself. So here it is guys, the B-Link SEI 12. Okay, so let's just quickly run through the specs. This mini PC is powered by the Intel Core i5-1235U and this is Intel's 12th generation 10 core processor which is clocked at a 1.3 GHz base and 4.3 GHz turbo. For graphics we have integrated Intel Iris XE graphics. We've got 16 gigs of DDR4 dual channel RAM which is upgradable to a maximum of 64 gigs. For storage we have a 512 gig M.2 2280 SSD and it is a new PCIe 4.0 drive and can be upgraded to a maximum of two terabytes. You also have a spare two and a half inch SATA expansion and this supports up to two terabyte SATA drives. Furthermore, we've got Wi-Fi 6, Gigabit LAN and Bluetooth 5.2. This does support USB 3 and comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Professional. This supports dual 4K display output with two HDMI ports and you also have dual cooling fans built in. So we've got a very interesting and unique build quality. The actual case is made from metal, but you've got this very nice fabric mesh finish on the top. The entire unit is finished in navy blue, and I have to say, it looks really nice. Now on the front, we've got the Intel Core i5 sticker. We've got a clear CMOS hole and two USB 3 ports. And next to that, we have a Type-C port, headphone jack, and a power button. If we keep going, we've got a metal mesh grill on the side. On the back of the unit we have a gigabit LAN, two USB 2 ports and we have two 4K HDMI outputs. Next to that we have a power socket and you can see a large vent at the top. If we keep going, nothing on this side, just more vents and that brings us back to the front and this is what the bottom of the mini PC looks like. So without any further ado, I'm going to get this all set up and we're going to find out exactly how good of a performance we can get out of the B-Link SEI 12. I'll be right back. So as you can see, we have Windows 11 Professional conveniently pre-installed for you. This is the full Windows experience in a mini compact size. You get all the usual Windows applications, including the Windows App Store, so you can download all your favorite games and apps. Now, first of all, let's check out the Windows system properties. So as you can see, we are running Windows 11 Professional with the Intel Core i5-1235U with 16 gigs of RAM, 64-bit OS, and it's also already activated and ready to use. Now system storage info, we have 512 gigs of internal storage from which you've got 463 gigs which are usable and from that we have 423 gigs free to use. So I've not installed anything yet. This is what you get out of the box. And the second drive you can see is my 64 gig flash drive which contains all my 4K samples which we are going to be testing right now. So let's go ahead and play some 4K video samples from a USB drive and see how this mini PC performs. So starting off with the high bitrate 4K Jellyfish demo. This one is 160 megabits per second and as you can see it's playing nice and smooth. So next up I also tested the 180 megabits per second file and you can see that is also playing super smooth and the hardest test the 400 megabit per second file is also playing really nice and smooth. So high bitrate 4K videos playing really well on this system. Okay so now I'm going to test a few clips 4K60 with HDR. Let's see how they play. Now, as you guys can see, the first clip is playing fine with no issues. However, the second clip is 4K60 with HDR10, and you can see there are some rendering issues where the video looks a bit oversaturated. 
Now this seems to be the case with most HDR10 files. I did find a fix for it. Just download and install the K-Lite Mega Codec package and then play the video back again and you will notice the difference. All right, so let's move on now to some 4K streaming on YouTube. So the first clip is 4K60 with HDR and it's streaming super smooth with no issues at all. So here are a few more 4K trailers for you to check out. That can't be good. This How long were you locked up? 18 years, bro. Just got out last week. So next up, I loaded up Netflix from the web browser and I was able to stream a maximum of 1080p. Helicopter mixing. And I was able to achieve exactly the same with Amazon Prime Video and Disney Plus. So that's 1080p streaming max. World strange. All right, so moving on to my favorite test, the gaming test, and we're starting off with GTA 5. And you can see we have the graphics set to 1080p resolution and normal graphics. So the game is very playable, it looks okay, and we're achieving around 30 frames per second average. The GPU usage reaches around 70%, and the TDP does go up to around 22 watts. So overall, decent GTA 5 experience from this mini PC. And just to show you what happens if you drop the resolution down to 720p with graphics still set to normal, you can see that the frame rate stays the same, so average 30 frames per second, but the GPU usage has nearly halved to around 35% average, and the average TDP is around 18 watts. So less strain to the mini PC playing GTA 5 at 720p with a pretty decent performance and frame rate. So next I'm testing an older generation PC game. So this is COD Infinite Warfare, resolution 1080p and graphics set to the highest possible, which is high. Now whilst the game plays and looks okay, we are achieving around 40 FPS average, but you can see that the GPU is running at around 93% with close to 29 watt TDP. So power and graphic consumption is quite high, but the gameplay nevertheless is pretty good and you do have a decent dual fan cooling system. So at least you're not gonna have any overheating issues. But of course, it'd probably be wise to drop down the graphics and maybe even resolution to boost that frame rate, but also to drop the consumption down to a more comfortable level for the mini PC. But this is what you can expect on the highest. So one more PC game before we move on to some emulation. We are now playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p resolution and set to the highest graphics. We are achieving just over 30 frames per second. GPU usage is more or less maxed out and you can see we have a TDP of over 36 watts. So this is what you can expect from Shadow of the Tomb Raider, all maxed out. The game plays and looks quite good, but no doubt this is quite taxing on the system. Okay, so next we had to test PS3 emulation playing Fight Night Champion. So we're using RPCS3, resolution is set to 720p, and we're achieving around 30 frames per second. The GPU usage is quite high at around 86% max, with just over 34 watt TDP. It's not the smoothest experience at 720p, but it is nevertheless quite playable. You could drop the resolution down to 540p for a smoother experience, but really 720p is the lowest I would consider to play a PS3 game. So yeah, this is what you can expect from PS3 emulation at 720p. So I had to test another PS3 game. So this is God of War, Ghost of Sparta. You can see this game plays much better at 60 FPS, 720p resolution. The GPU is handling this one much better with around 29 watt TDP. And you guys can see that this game is playing pretty good on this system. Okay, next up, PS2 emulation with PCSX2, and we are playing Smash Court Tennis 2, 1080p resolution, achieving 60 FPS, GPU usage is under 20%, with around 16 watt TDP, so PS2 emulation is impressive, and you can switch up that resolution if you want to. Okay, so 
so next up wii u emulation playing tekken tag tournament resolution is 1080p and we are achieving a comfortable 60 fps with 53 percent gpu usage and just over 31 watt tdp game looks and plays great and you could slightly bump up that resolution if you wanted <laughs> Okay, so the next one to show you is GameCube emulation with Dolphin playing Capcom versus SNK2. Resolution 1080p and we're achieving a comfortable 60 FPS. <laughs> So I did do a quick video encoding test using the software Handbrake. So I converted a two minute 4K video to 1080p and it took three minutes and 20 seconds to complete. Now here are the results for the Wi-Fi speed tests. We achieved download speeds of 59 megabits per second and upload speeds of 15 megabits per second. And this is typically the top speeds we achieve in our office. And moving on to benchmarks, in Geekbench we achieved single core score of 1532 and multi core score of 7390. And in the Antutu benchmark test we achieved 667k. And this mini PC achieves a CPU pass mark score of just over 13,000. So let's see how that compares with the other mini PCs of this year. So here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2022, allowing you to compare the specs, prices and features of all the latest mini PCs. The chart ranking is based on overall benchmark results. So as you can see, the B-Link SEI 12 has taken position one on this chart with the highest Geekbench score for both single and multi-core and also the highest Antutu score we have seen so far in a mini PC. So the new number one top dog on this chart is the B-Link SEI 12. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them completely free of charge and at your leisure. So there you have it guys, the new B-Link SEI 12 is a genuine mini PC monster, offering a powerful performance throughout. The 10 core i5 packs plenty of power, you can do whatever you want to do on this mini PC, it handles everything with ease. I surfed the web, I watched movies, I streamed 4K videos online, I played games, I emulated multiple game consoles including PS3 and it handled it all very well. I also edited and encoded 4K videos. Every software I tested worked flawlessly, that includes Premiere Pro, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, Photoshop, Keyshot, Blender and more. Now I love that new design, all metal body with fabric finish on top, it looks really nice. This is the best performing mini PC I have tested on the channel so far, bang for your buck product right here. And I can tell you right now, many more mini PC reviews coming up on the channel. So stay tuned, sub to the channel and hit the like button if you found this one useful. And that being said, let me know in the comments what you guys think of this one. That's all for this video, thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have an amazing day. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.